Hi, Avi Myers here. Welcome to NTNM Extras. We had so many requests this year and so many people we wanted to take care of that we actually have to do special shows in order to accommodate all the worthy people. Now, our next guest actually was supposed to be on the regular shows, but circumstances prevented him from, um, from coming on. So he's somebody you're very familiar with. By the way, this, this show was produced by Jamie Hirsch. That's Sonny's daughter. Sonny's our entire technical crew. You can get all this and all the other interviews on the web at ntnm.org. At this point, Jewish Chicago is on the street. It's free. Please pick it up. You can also go to ntnm.org and read it for free on the web. Somebody who is one of my favorite guests, who actually participated in the live show when Jim Nally was, 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 um, was in Boston last time, is the commissioner of the 13th District of Cook County, Larry Sufferden. Larry, how are you? Thank you very much. Always good to be with you. It's my pleasure. And um, you are running for re-election? I'm running for re-election. Uh, I have an opponent. Uh, uh, I'm campaigning and talking to my constituents. Uh, it's been a real privilege for the last seven years to represent East and West Rogers Park, Evanston, uh, Nutria Township, Niles Township uh, in, in the, on the Cook County Board. And I'm looking forward, hopefully, to being able to do it again. We've just finished, as you know, the cycle of uh, doing the uh, seminars on appealing your property tax assessments. Uh, the Rogers Park closed um, uh, on uh, December 28th, uh, and we had Joe Berrios of the Board of Review out. We previously had done it with the assessor, and hopefully we've gotten everybody to get the right assessment for their property so that they're not paying more than they should for their, their taxes. But, you know, we've got a lot of other issues. Since I last saw you, we were able to repeal half of the Cook County sales tax increase, and uh, I'm looking forward to a new president because uh, I think many people know here that I'm not a fan of Todd Strogers, and I think that Todd no. has, uh, has uh, <laughs> uh, failed all of us. And, you know, I've been supporting uh, Alderman Tony Preckwinkle, who's a very good person, but uh, Terry O'Brien, who's somebody who's well known to this show and, and lives in the area, is also a very good candidate who's in this race. Uh, president of our water reclamation district. And by the way, I'm happy to say that all four Democratic candidates have done a hi, I'm Marty Levinson, welcome to the North Town News Magazine. Well, that's good, and a couple of them <laughs> really need a Marty Levinson haircut. That's definitely, <laughs> by the way, that, you're not kidding. <laughs> I even had one Republican do it, too. Oh, well, th th that's good. How, and Marty, how are you out there? It's always uh, uh, good to know you're watching. Um, so, you know, as, as we get into the, to this cycle, at the county, we've been working hard to come up with more transparency on, on the uh, uh, contracting side, uh, trying to get a reasonable budget, which we passed for the first time in the seven years I've been there. We passed the budget before the budget year started. Um, looking forward, I'm, I'm working to separate the Forest Preserve District from the county so that we would have an environmental board that would run the Forest Preserve. Because right now we run into a lot of potential conflicts between businesses that have county interests and those that should be worrying about protecting the interests of the uh, uh, land that we, we've been so uh, fortunate to be given. So th that's one of the major issues for the future to be uh, worked on. Extending the life of the Independent Health Board. You and I have discussed the you Independent Health Board. I'm glad you brought that yeah. up because it's interesting to me that all, when I was watching the debate on uh, Channel 11, that was your doing Yes, that all four candidates despite their diversity, are all in favor of the Independent Health Board. Well, it, it has really done a remarkable job of turning around the finances of the hospital, getting us into a solid position so that this year, even though we're spending more on health care, we're spending less of the Cook County tax dollars and getting more federal dollars in exchange. So we reduced our dependence on Cook County tax dollars by $72 million, but we increased spending, and therefore we're serving more people, and they're looking at more... Uh, creative ways of being able to reach out. As you know, one of the things that's always bothered me is that Rogers Park and Evanston don't have any county health facilities. We've used federally qualified health clinics that we've helped get, uh, one down the street that's uh, just the other side of Western here on Pratt uh, that uh, is uh, uh, the Heartland Alliance right. uh, QHC. But you know, we are in a position now, I think, with this Independent Health Board to really figure out strategies to get more care to people out there. And because of the economy, we have more and more people who have lost their health insurance. And even if the federal government passes the Senate version, which has just recently passed, um, it, some of that doesn't kick in until 2013 and 2014. And we, we've got people who need care today, who have cancers and other 
diseases that uh, we need to work on. So I'm very proud of the Independent Health Board. It was my creation. I wrote that ordinance. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, hopefully we're, we're going to be doing uh, fine with that. You know, the, the other issues that are out there for, for the, uh, the, the county are, are really winning back the confidence of our citizens. You know, Todd Stroger has just not done anything to make people feel good, whether it's hiring his cousin or hiring the busboy <laughs> or hiring the person from the locker room at the East Bank Club. You know, we just do not have anything that's happened that causes people to say, boy, I'm proud I live in Cook County. And I hope we can get that back. You know, as you talk to all these judge candidates who are coming in, all the ones running for the circuit court are going to be representing us as judges of the circuit court of Cook County. And I always want those judges to feel that uh, it's an important thing that they represent all of our citizens. Yeah, Cook county. county has the second largest court system of any county in the uh, country. Uh, actually, the largest. Oh, we, we topped L.A. now? I know it goes oh, yeah. back and forth a little. Well, the problem, you know, in L.A., they, they have separate courts. They have probate courts, and, you know, we yeah. have a unified court system, so we have everything under one roof, if you will. You know, the, the candidates for judges that you're hearing from today could either sit in probate, they could sit in domestic relations, they could sit ah. in medical malpractice, they could, they can sit in traffic. I mean, all, all of the branches of, of a full court system are in one place. Where in L.A. in California, there are, there are separate different courts for each of those, so they're not the same system. Yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't know that. That's interesting. That's definitely yeah. interesting. So, um, are there any particular people? I mean, you mentioned Preckwinkle. Well, I, I you know, I'm working hard for Tony Preckwinkle yeah. because I think that she is a, a somebody who is a very decent person. She's worked very hard to be the alderman of the fourth ward. She's done a lot of good things there, and I. I'm, I'm optimistic that she will cause us to repeal the second half of the increase in the sales tax and that sh she will work with us to uh, extend the permanent life on the Independent Health Board and that she will give some confidence to citizens that the government's uh, running well. I'm also helping Tom Dart, who's our sheriff, who's doing a remarkable job. Uh, he has an opponent in, in this race, and I think that Tom has earned uh, his right to be reelected. On the state level, I've been working with Governor Quinn he really has done a lot of things to reach out to the people in our area, and I, I really believe he deserves a full term, having come in under these terrible circumstances. Um, for uh, Secretary of State, I'm for Jesse White, as we all are. I mean, what yeah. a wonderful job he's done, and Lisa Madigan is Attorney General. I've been helping David Miller, who is running for um, the Comptroller's position. David is a graduate of Evanston Township High School. He grew up here in the area. He and his twin brother, on the same day in 2002, were elected to two different states' general assemblies. Interesting. His twin brother was elected to the North Carolina General Assembly <laughs> and David to the Illinois General Assembly. David has served with distinction from 2002 on at, in, in, in the Illinois General Assembly, and he's also a practicing dentist. Uh, but he, you know, as, as Comptroller, he has some very interesting ideas on how best to utilize uh, the funds that we have here in Illinois. And, He's a great candidate. And on the Evanston Township side, there's a young fellow running for Julie Hamos' seat that I've been supporting named Eamon Kelly, who okay. uh, grew up in Evanston. I've known him since he was born. I went through the Evanston school system. Uh, and it, uh, after he graduated from the University of Illinois, he became what they call a Dunn Fellow, which is a special program. It's like being a Fulbright, except it's to the Illinois government. And they made him the chief of staff at the State Board of Education. He did a phenomenal job there. And then he went back to law school, and he's now an associate at uh, Jenner and Block and doing a great job. In that race, though, there are four other very good Democratic candidates. I mean, you probably have had a number of them on. Actually, I haven't had any of them on, well, <laughs> believe it or not. Well, part of it is that w w none of uh, West Rogers Park is mm -hmm. in that district. There's just a little sliver of the district in East Rogers Park. You know, it's, it's, it's right. really a lakefront district that runs through Evanston and into New Trier. Well, actually, one of the things I found, and, and when we're filming, I and mean, we have to do everything early, is I know that after Jewish Chicago was out, and after I finish all the filming, there are going to be people calling me to get on the show and to want to be in Jewish Chicago. And that's just the way it is because people aren't going to wake up. We're, we're actually filming this on December 30th, just so, so you guys know. And I know. I, I'm pushing the button to send Jewish Chicago to the printer on January 6th. I know as soon as I press that button, the phone's going to ring off the hook. A lot of people aren't waking up to the election until after New Year. Well, and, and that's one of the hard parts in this election cycle because February 2nd is the primary. December 28th was the first day you could do an absentee ballot. January 11th is the first day you can do early voting. 
And we, we really, uh, people aren't focused on, on the election yet. You know, no, I, not at all. <coughs> I mean, <coughs> Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, Festivus, you know, you name it. That, 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 that's right. Uh, and as you pointed out early uh, on one of your other segments, we have two sub-circuit races going on in, in, right. in uh, our area, which are really heated. There are a lot of very good lawyers on, on both sides. Uh, the only candidate I've endorsed is uh, Steve Bernstein. Again, somebody I've known for the 33 years I've lived in Evanston, and uh, you know our kids grew up together, and he's a good person. But the people running in both those races are just very good candidates. And, uh, uh, you know, it, we're going to see battles of yard signs in the next few weeks. And, and uh, <laughs> hopefully the voters will realize there's an election, not just the candidates. I've been to a couple of uh, situations where uh, uh, the crowd may be 100 people, but 75 of them are candidates and their, their campaign managers, and there's only 25, 000, 25 people who are citizens. Oh, by the way, I, I could use a yard sign from you, please. Yes, okay, <laughs> I will get one over here. Yeah, I, I, I do support him very strongly. <laughs> okay, thanks, Abby, I appreciate that. Okay, and that's really hard because i got in a hernia right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in terms of, so, I mean, this is the first, you, you, you know, you have, you have an opponent uh, this particular time. Well, by the way, I, he hasn't even surfaced. I haven't heard anything from him. That's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you mind that <laughs> tremendously. Yeah, I, uh, uh, you know... It, it's, I believe in ballot access. Yeah. I, I'm happy that uh, he was able to get on the ballot. I look forward, we're going to do a debate with the League of Women Voters on uh, January 10th. Um, you know, uh, it is important for all of us not to feel that the, we ha have these offices by any right. I mean, mm -hmm. it is, the electoral process is important. I'm reaching out and trying to talk to people. As you know, I have task forces on taxes, on, on forest preserve, on health care, on the courts that meet on a regular basis. Um, and so, you know, we're constantly trying to deal with the needs of the people of Rogers Park, Evanston, New Trier, Niles Township, a uh, little in Northfield, a little Maine that I represent. So, uh, and I'm always appreciative of being on your show because every time I'm on your show, I hear back from a lot of constituents who d who do watch you uh, at various times. And you play everywhere. You play in the suburban uh, cycle of of Comcast. You play in the city. Uh, I even have had Mayor Daly say he saw me on Abby's show. So, uh, cool. and so you must play in the South Loop uh, a little. Well, we play in the entire city, but yeah. and, and Mayor Daly, it's about time you came out. Well, you know, I gave up already inviting him. Uh, well, you know, you <laughs> may. PR you, Pearson you, always says, oh, yeah, contact us. We'll get him on your show for sure. You know what? We ran into him by accident once in uh, in East Rogers Park, and that's the only time he's been on. Well, I, I, <laughs> I would go to him. I wouldn't wait for him. To come I think him. so, but you know what? I... I you know what? I <laughs> we let's talk about you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm. Uh, our office in Evanston at 820 Davis is open to all of our constituents, uh, and I encourage you if you have, think you have questions pertaining to your property taxes or your property tax assessments to come and and, and see us. Um, and don't hesitate if you have any questions to come out. Now, I'm, uh, even though this is going to be after New Year's, you know, I have my annual. Uh, canoe paddle on New Year's Day, and I'm expecting 400 people to be with me on New Year's morning as we put canoes in down at the Willow Street Dam uh, in Northfield, and then we'll go up into Morton Grove and, and end at Dempster Street, five and a half miles. And uh, while this show will play after that, next year, plan to join us on New Year's Day. We, we go down the river, no matter how cold it is, it is really a fun day, and as you paddle, you, you're actually generating heat, so you don't feel cold. And we get to greet people who we'll see with the great uh, phrase, Happy Canoe Year. And, <laughs> and, 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 and I want to wish you a happy canoe year. And oh, one of these days, you. I'm going to get you out in, in, in a, uh, either a canoe or a kayak. And Actually, I'll, I'll I make would sure probably you have like enough, that. Uh, I, used to, I used to do stuff like that. I used to really enjoy it, to tell you the yeah. truth. Well, uh, you know, we're very fortunate to have our forest preserve system. And uh, we, we've started doing a pumpkin paddle, which I sponsored, and now it's an official event to the Forest Preserve that's uh, on uh, Halloween. And uh, the weather is a little better, and we've been trying to get uh, uh, new canoers and kayakers out for that so that we can uh, get them to enjoy uh, what's going on. And sometimes, uh, you know, w during the summer, we'll do some uh, sunset uh, canoe rides in the Forest Preserve, nice. which are just beautiful, and, you know, so the animals will be probably coming down to the edge of the water and... You yeah. get to see things. So, you know, one of the great things about being a county commissioner is that you get to deal with the Forest Preserve as well as the county, uh, even though one of my, my platforms is to separate the yeah. two. For me, I, I enjoy it, but I really do think for the future of making sure we preserve this land and get the remaining land we need 
to, to really have a complete forest preserve system, uh, we need a separate board of environmentalists. I like that idea very much. And uh, you've also been very open in, in, in getting people out there. Uh, your website, if people want to contact you? It's www.suffredin.org. And uh, Suffredin is S-U-F-F-R-E-D-I-N. Uh, the office is 847-864-1209. Uh, or in, in, in downtown in the county building, 312-603-6383. I want to thank you very much, Larry Suffered, and somebody I support, somebody I, whose district I live in, and somebody I'm definitely voting for. Um, I support you on every single level of every publication I have and every show. Uh, and and, thank and you. I, I'm looking forward to, uh, to another great four years from you. Thank you.